everyone, this is another video about retro gaming stuff and today we're going to talk about the Virtual Boy. We're going to service it, replacing all the capacitor uh, inside. We are going to install a Virtual Tape. I'm going to show you also how to program it because it's not really easy. Uh, and I will explain what, um, uh, what device you will need to program it. And we're going to install uh, Super Nintendo connector and a small switch uh, with a Vita tape to change the color. So yeah, let's uh, open it up and uh, remove all the uh, different uh, PCB inside the motherboard and all the dotter board for the sound, etc. And uh, then, I'm, then I'm going to um, show all the capacitor we're going to replace. So let's do this.
So before reassembling everything, this is the audio board and I was looking uh, somewhere to solder my uh, wires to the TV output. What I wanted is uh, something before the volume, so I could put the volume at minimum. This should uh, uh, mute the speaker and the uh, stereo jack output, but I will still have audio to the TV. The thing is the Two, two, two wires to the TV, I need line level and the line level are after the op amp and the wheel is before. So, uh, what I'm going to do is solder to I think it's 6 and 5 which are before the internal switch of the, of the jack and um, if I don't want to have any sound from the from the from the virtual board when it's plugged to the, to the TV, only on the TV I will put a dummy, uh, a dummy jack here. This should uh, disconnect the internal switch to the speaker, and I will still have line in level. And uh, yeah, if I use the virtual board in standalone, it will behave like uh, like stock one. But uh, yeah, if you have a better solution, let me know in the comments because uh, yeah, I don't uh, I don't really know uh, if there if it's possible. Uh, rather than redo the circuitry before the um, the amplifier. Thank you. 
Now let's talk about the real problem uh, which plagues the virtual boy. It's the lenses. So um, back in the day, they didn't solder uh, the ribbon cable to the lenses. They were just glued. So what we're going to do is melt a little bit of the uh, ribbon cable and solder to the PCB of the lens. Uh, if you don't really like this method because it's destructive, there's, I think, is a Sega Sonic fan, if I remember correctly, who is making a kit for the virtual boy lenses. So you just have to gently remove the glue and the, um, the ribbon cable. Uh, there's, uh, I think it's two small PCB here and one in 90 degrees and then you can uh, so, um, just plug the ribbon cable uh, but since I'm uh, some kind of a chief bastard I'm going to do the destructive method and we'll never have to look at it again
uh, speaking of uh, repair you can repair uh, the lenses if you want but you may have another problem is the other side uh, this is where it's supposed to be inside the PCB uh, inside the main board and uh, as you can see I have the connector here which are lift and I have some this is really bright but maybe like that as you can see I got some which are lift and some which are already missing so this is where uh, any reparation is uh, complicated because you cannot uh, if you can try to re-glue with super glue the, the the tip of the ribbon but for those which are already broken this is like unsalvageable so this is where you will need um, Sega Sonic fan kit which is completely replace the the ribbon uh, or I'm uh, currently wor working into another solution which is uh, currently not there for you it's just a few minutes or seconds on this video but for me it's well uh, quiet sometimes uh, I was talking just earlier about uh, a solution for a damaged ribbon cable so mine finally comes uh, on the mail and here they are so this is a replacement ribbon cable uh, for the lens and uh, this one was uh, from OSH Park so I choose uh, the red ribbon as a name uh, references to Dragon Ball so basically what you're going to have is going to be a bit different this is my prototype and I already uh, published an, um, a uh, an, another one uh, with some minor, minor tweak uh, because I've got some issue with uh, this one and uh, not really issue but it makes the installation a bit complicated but basically this is uh, what you're going to have and here as you can see you've got like vias here so you will have to cut them uh, this is to facilitate the installation and avoid uh, bridges between all the traces so you're going to have something like that and this uh, is soldering on the side of the uh, of the lens another thing is you will have to uh, salvage the small cardboard uh, which is uh, the the stiffer uh, for the ribbon cable so again this is not really a ribbon this is a flex PCB so it's not as flexible as the real um, ribbon but it's work just fine so this is one I've installed so it's Uh, protected with some uh, captain to avoid any contact and hopefully you're going to see but yes you can see that it's working this one is unmodified so this one and the other lens are working just fine so yeah let's continue the video with the uh, virtual tape installation uh, this is a virtual tape and uh, before uh, showing how to install it we need to talk how to program it let's say you have built yourself a virtual tape and uh, you put all of that together and now you need to program that. so to program that you have to link those uh, pads to a programmer for CPLD I use um, a USB blaster I bought this one on Amazon uh, not sure if it's a real one but it's working and uh, at first I was trying to find a matching pin here to there but I got issue like the um, um, the checksum was not correct or the verification on uh, the Altera software 
uh, didn't work or it didn't recognize correctly. So I, I'm not sure why, but after uh, regard, um, after looking at the data sheet of the CPLD, uh, I found some differences on um, uh, Fertech design and what it's uh, recommend to program the CPLD. So I made this board Uh, so this is for two reasons. The first one is I wanted to have exactly uh, what is recommended uh, by uh, Intel or Altera uh, on the design you need to, uh, on what uh, the circuit is uh, to program that. So basically I have um, um, a 3.3 uh, volt uh, from 5 volt to 3.3 volt adapter uh, to have the correct uh, voltage. And I have uh, some uh, screw terminal, so I can just wire everything here, then put that accordingly. And after that, I can use the original ribbon cable uh, from uh, my programmer directly there. So the only thing I have to do is to power that with a micro USB, and it immediately. Uh, being recon recognized and programmed just fine uh, on the software. So uh, I'm just going to um, wire, uh, well, I have another one here. I'm going to wire this one to program and uh, see if uh, it's working correctly. And uh, I will show you how to program it correct, uh, how to program it on the Windows. I'm not going into uh, installing the USB blaster, uh, the, th uh, the only thing you have to uh, be sure is uh, is it detected correctly. So you should have uh, something on the uh, um, USB controller, so this is in French, of course, but you will you should have the, uh, the uh, USB blaster and um, Basically, it will depend on what you're going to use, but it should, shouldn't be a, a, a problem. Uh, so what you're going to need is to download and install uh, Quartus, so either Quartus Prime or Quartus Web. If you can find it, it doesn't matter which, which one, because at the end, we are going to use only the programmer version. So um, here, I'm going to use Qu uh, Quartus Prime, but this is exactly uh, the same as Quartus Web. Uh, so what, you're going to be, what we are going to use is the programming version. So this one, Programmer, and it's open another, uh, another uh, window. So you can also open directory the Programmer. We don't need uh, to compile since uh, Fertech already gave us uh, the firmware already compiled. So this is what you're going to have. Uh, you need to check on hardware setup to see if your USB blaster is correctly detected. And if you have everything plugged, this is plugged with my uh, adapter. And if you do uh, auto detect, you should find FIM240Z. Uh, device. This is our CPLD. Right now it make no checksum, no uh, user code because um, we haven't uh, checked. So if you do examine, you will see like user code is 00, zero checksum is that because it's empty. You can check also blank check. Is it empty? Yes, it is empty. So if you are here, this is re uh, if you can erase it and uh, uh, blank checking, this is already uh, on a good start. So what we do, what we have to do now, is to change the file, and we're going to add uh, either uh, the uh, puff file for NTSC or VGA. I'm going to use NTSC. So right now, this is not programmed yet. This is the file we are going to upload into 
the CPLD. So we're going to program and then verify to see if everything is okay. Yeah, so now it's supposed to be programmed. So what we can do is to delete, redo not to detect, and check by examine if the checksum is correct and use the code correct. And yes, it is correct. Now it's done, we can uh, close that, unplug everything and install it to just check if you have a video. If you have nothing, uh, check if the, the pads uh, from the CPLD is correctly uh, soldered and check if any other um, uh, components on the board like the, the, the SRAM uh, or uh, the THS or anything is correctly soldered. But with that, the CPLD is correctly programmed.
So we've got our um, Vieta Boy completely ser serviced. Uh, we've got our cable ready. So with red, green, blue, sync, uh, plus five volt and ground. I have my uh, cable for the switch. We've got our Super Nintendo connector with the button to ch choose the palette. So now the only missing part is the uh, virtual tape. So the virtual tape, I don't have really a lot of uh, solution to propose to uh, put it. So you don't have any uh, screw or stuff like that to hold it. So what I'm going to do is using some really thick double sided tape put it here so it's not on uh, any chip or anything but it should give me in just enough thickness and i'm going to slide it here so i should be able to plug the the ribbon from the lenses i should be able to plug here from the um, ultra tape I only need to solder the uh, cable and uh, yeah that should be that should be do the trick So I plug the Vietra Boy here with the uh, Super Nintendo connector. I plug a dummy jack. I will explain why. And I plug the power so I can cut that. Ah. Now.
Oh, I need to play to press start. I have I have a false contact on this. This is my cable. This is not related to my st installation. So there you have it. It's working. And if I press the button next to ah uh, next to the come on, I really need to change my really need to change my Super Nintendo cable. And if I press the button, I can change the color no problem so i'm going to turn down the volume one eternity later what's happening so basically don't pay attention about the the sounds cutting this is my cable for my super nintendo which is really in bad shape the connection is working just fine uh, so yeah why i have a dummy a dummy uh, jack this is because the way i wire uh, to still have a functioning uh, virtual boy without plugging on the tv is the um, the source is before the the jack so if i remove the jack you will hear that I have sound from the helmet so yeah if you want to plug it plug it on the TV and you want to make it uh, cut the sound you need to plug something uh, and it will just cut the speakers from the from the from the headset so yeah uh, it was really an adventure um, just need to close it uh, this this one is going to be this Vita Boy is going to be sold on my store. Uh, so, yeah, I hope you like it. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you soon.